So good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, this updated uh, information session on the new Fannie Mae requirements that are rippling through the uh, condo and co-op association marketplace right now. Um, we put this together as a follow-up to a webinar we did back in the middle of December uh, in advance of these uh, requirements coming out. And so uh, what we're gonna do is just take hopefully only about 30 minutes of your time, talk about, uh, uh, revisit uh, what's going on for those that may have missed the December uh, presentation and also provide some updates on uh, both what we're hearing and what we're seeing in the marketplace. Um, so the purpose, uh, hopefully this is working right. Let's see here, here we go. All right, so the purpose of the presentation, as I said, is just to give uh, those that weren't uh, involved uh, or participated in December an overview, how they are going to impact your community, uh, how they're going to have an impact on you all as board members, how they are impacting management companies like EJF. Also, uh, what's happening nationally on this issue? Uh, it started off a little slowly, but we're starting to see things heat up on this. Um, and um, also talk about next steps uh, that we're looking at for our clients. Uh, so just as a background uh, information, Fannie Mae uh, provides a huge amount of uh, guarantees on the mortgages in the US. So if you go to SunTrust or any bank and uh, take out a loan, um, a lot of the times uh, those are going to be underwritten in conformance with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to some extent guidelines so that the uh, bank can then uh, bundle those mortgages and sell them uh, in the marketplace. Um, it's, really, uh, it's really what led to the creation of the 30-year mortgage. Um, it's a quasi-government organization. Um, and as I said, uh, they handle a lot of condo and co-op loans. So Fannie Mae uh, looked at the tragedy of the Surfside condo building collapse in Florida, I guess about a year and a half ago now, and uh, came to the conclusion that they needed to update their underwriting requirements uh, due to that tragedy. Um, I just came back from a, from a national law conference that uh, talked about this from the insurance industry standpoint. And obviously there were a lot of unique things to the circumstances that led to the collapse, uh, including the fact that uh, the state of Florida has different laws than the DMV concerning the approval of special assessments. Uh, but it's important to note that uh, all of the insurance companies on all of the policies at that location uh, paid out and paid out the maximum amount of their policies without question. I think the primary insurer paid out within 22 days of the tragedy. And so um, when you've got, you know, I think it was somewhere around $48 million worth of coverage that was paid out, that won't cover the overall cost for that tragedy. Uh, but when you look at events like that and the dollar amounts involved, uh, you start to understand a little bit better why uh, Fannie and Freddie uh, were taking on uh, these concerns. Um, it's also causing um, other uh, federal agencies and state governments to look at their current statutes and requirements. So just as a quick example, um, Virginia, even before uh, Surfside had different requirements in place concerning reserve studies, when, how often they needed to be done, uh, and so on, versus, say, the district. And so that's um, also something that's probably going to be impacted through a ripple effect because of the Surfside tragedy. Um, there's additional information uh, on the two websites listed there. If you want to take a, a shot of that picture, um, as was indicated, this will be is being recorded, and we will also make this uh, PowerPoint slide deck available uh, to everyone. So let's talk about the new requirements real quick. 
uh, lenders and appraisers are required to ask more questions uh, about building safety, maintenance, special assessment, and reserves. And they want to know whether the community and management companies are aware of any conditions or, and this is the critical sentence here, deferred maintenance that may negatively impact the safety, structural soundness, habitability, or functional use of the individual units. Okay, that's really the key. And you see I put an asterisk by that. Um, and that's because at, before the Fannie Mae guidelines came into effect, similar questions were in place on a lot of uh, lender questionnaires, but they allowed uh, us to give a tempered answer, if you will. Yes, to the best of our knowledge, or we are not able to make a determination. With the new guidelines, uh, you are now required to only give a yes or no answer. And so that creates a huge liability consideration for whoever is filling out that document. Um, I've been in the business for almost 30 years. I'm not sure I can speak to the habitability uh, and structural soundness of, I know I can't, of, of a particular building. And I would be willing to guess that most board members can't either. So where does that leave everybody? Um, and so first, if you answer yes to this question or any portions of this question, then there's a whole slew of documentation that's gonna be requested. And we're seeing these requests now. Early on when I did the December presentation, we weren't seeing much of it, but now our managers are seeing more and more that the lender is asking for these types of reports. Um, some of them are easy. And we're obviously going to know if, if the district has issued any building code violations. Um, but they're looking for architectural reports. They're looking for roof inspection reports. They're looking for surveys of your electrical panels. Um, the underwriters are starting to really bear down on what they want before they will sign off on a loan. And, and just to be clear, you know, we're talking about, when you, when you break it down, we're talking about existing owners who want to refinance their current mortgage. And we're talking about prospective purchasers who want to buy into your buildings. Um, and so if you are running afoul of these guidelines, you are significantly impact or potentially impacting the marketability of your building and impacting uh, your uh, asset value if you're unable to refinance. So um, that's why it becomes so critical. So again, focusing on the key requirements, uh, projects that have received a directive from a regulatory authority or inspection agency. Again, that's pretty straightforward. I would say, you know, a large majority of our clients do not have those kinds of issues. Um, but then you get into significant deferred maintenance. Um, deficiencies that meet one or more of the following criteria will make projects ineligible for Fannie Mae financing. Um, seven days of full or partial evacuation. Again, that doesn't happen very often. You have a major fire in a building um, or uh, something along those lines, maybe a gas leak, but typically uh, we don't see those uh, very often at all. Um, but again, this second bullet point the project has damaged deficiencies or defects severe enough to affect safety, soundness, or structural integrity, and or substantial repairs and rehabilitation are required, and or one or more of the building's major structural mechanical elements are impeded. So again, do you have cracks in your garage? What is the condition of your roof? Um, what are the condition of your primary systems, HVAC, electrical, and plumbing? Um, all of those are now potentially being considered by underwriters. And we are seeing some variances between underwriters. Some will take, you know, just a reserve study and say that's sufficient. And others will say we need to see several of these reports. That's in addition to things like information on special assessments, copies of minutes, and so on. Uh, the other, other key requirements that are important to note is you're now required to put 10% of your budget towards your annual reserve contribution. 
So if you're collecting $100,000 in condo fees a year, 10,000 as a minimum has to be put into reserves or the underwriting will ding you for that. So what if you have a reserve study that says you only need to put $8,000 a year in? We've asked that question and been told that you still have to put the full $10,000 in. So obviously, um, Fannie Mae didn't think this through entirely, but they are putting these things in place and the lenders are trying to make sure that they comply with them. Um, these requirements are, as I said, placing a heavy focus on structural and financial stability. And of course, as part of all this, documentation is going to be even more critical now um, than it's been ever before. So appraisals done of the building for insurance purposes, uh, financial statements, engineering reports, as I mentioned, reserve studies, um, inspection reports, all of those need to be documented and cataloged and maintained. And in a lot of cases, as I said, they're being requested by uh, underwriters. So during our December uh, presentation, we had a, a bank uh, that we work closely with also uh, on as a host. And they talked about some of these issues from a lender's perspective. Um, underfunding of reserves, uh, which can leave buildings in either disrepair or failure to get uh, material uh, projects completed, uh, deferred maintenance as we call it in the business. Um, the lenders want to see that you're maintaining the real estate values that they're going to lend. Um, they don't want to be looking at a building that's, you know, having issues with these requirements and therefore may be impacting the, the potential real estate values because people can't refinance or they can't sell their, their uh, individual units. Um, stress and disrepair equals a greater chance of homeowners with little or no equity in their unit to not buy in. Um, you know, uh, you also run into, uh, uh, well, we haven't seen it lately, uh, underwater mortgages increasing the possibility of foreclosure. So there are a number of things that the lenders are looking at that uh, tie into the new Fannie Mae requirements that, that a board needs to really think about um, as they look at their budget, as they make decisions about getting reserve studies done, um, even just uh, you know making sure that they're uh, getting the, the the capital projects done when they're needed, or if they're you know recommended to be done, uh, documenting why they can wait a little bit. A um, little bit more from the lender's perspective, uh, they're going to obviously be focused on safety and soundness. Uh, communities that are underfunded on their reserves will be held under more scrutiny. Uh, does the community have a reserve study? Um, our average building size across our portfolio is somewhere around 50 to 60 units. We have buildings that are as small as eight units and as large as 300 units. Um, the larger buildings typically will have a reserve study done regularly. Um, the smaller buildings will look, often look at that cost and question whether or not they should be making that expense every, every few years. Um, and the answer now is going to be that you need to be doing a reserve study. Uh, Virginia requires one every five years. Uh, most auditors will recommend that you have one done every five years. Uh, EJF recommends you have one done every five years. Um, and as part of that, looking at creating and having in place a capital budget as well. Um, and then, of course, if you're doing the study, are you uh, adhering to its recommendations? Are you funding at the recommended level? If you're not, do you have a plan in place to get to the recommended level within a, a limited amount of time? Are you reviewing that reserve study uh, annually to see what projects you are recommended to be undertaken in the coming year and doing an evaluation on whether or not uh, they need to be done or they're, hey, everything's running great. Um, if you simply have the reserve study and don't have a plan, uh, you're going to get dinged by the lenders. Um, communities that have special assessments will also be under more uh, scrutiny. Um, are you doing a special assessment because you're a community that feels like, well, we don't need to 
put money into reserves as much <clears throat> and have that money set aside. We'll just come up with the money uh, when we need it. That's gonna be frowned upon going forward. Um, are you doing recurring special assessments? Because you know, for the prior 20 years, you weren't funding at a good level, or uh, you weren't, uh, you know, you were, were not putting any increases uh, for your assessments in place. All of this is now going to become more critical. And when I do see a question in the box, I will come back to those, but feel free uh, to, to raise any questions as I go through this. So what does this mean for boards? Um, much bigger focus on being uh, fiduciarily responsible in the running of the property, paying more attention to reserves. And again, understanding how to read the reserve study and to read your balance sheet to understand what you have you're carrying on your books for reserves and what you have in actual cash to cover what's carried on the books. Uh, Andrew Spencer, our director of association um, uh, finances, is happy to meet with any board uh, to walk you all through that and explain the difference there. Um, that's probably one of the biggest uh, misunderstandings I see when I meet with boards, um, because if your reserves are underfunded by cash on hand, then you've got an issue. Regular reserve studies, I'm going to just keep drilling that down. Uh, because it's so important. Funding the reserves at the recommended amount, again, same thing. You're going to have to start being honest about your annual dues increases. Um, inflation is not zero. It's not going to be zero. Maybe it's not 7% uh, for, for this year or next, but you have to keep step with uh, expenses and not just uh, say, well, we're getting higher than the marketplace or we don't want to upset the owners. That will not fly going forward. Uh, and then, of course, as we've talked about, taking timely action on major projects. Uh, don't put those off. Maybe they can be delayed, but at least do that assessment and find out, uh, hey, do we have three more years on the roof or five years, or do we really need to start teeing that up to get it done in the next 12 to 18 months? Um, also use this as an opportunity to review your governing documents for your authority to approve special assessments. Some documents will set a dollar limit that could be 20 or 30 years old. Uh, anything over $15,000 requires uh, owner approval. Well, $15,000 20 years ago was a lot of money and it's not now. So do you need to amend your bylaw in that regard? Um, do your bylaws give you the board the, the authority to do a special assessment for something that is urgent and required, replacement repair versus we want to renovate the lobby. Understand what your bylaws say about uh, your ability to pass a special assessment. All right, so um, most management companies in the DMV have delegated processing of resale packages and questionnaires to third-party companies that we work in tandem with. Uh, the two big ones are HomeWise Docs and Condo Certs. As I mentioned, we used to be able to fill out their forms with simply a, to the best of our knowledge, or some other uh, protective language uh, from a liability standpoint. Um, HomeWise, which is who EJF uses, uh, came out with proposed language and talking to other uh, management companies across the country. Uh, they are trying to stick with this language. Um, we are starting to see some pushback from lenders that they won't even accept this. And so uh, that creates an issue of how this gets handled. So this is the language that HomeWise has, uh, has proposed and has put into sort of their form letter. Um, and you can see it's sort of protective or liability uh, reducing language. Um, as I said, it's sometimes accepted, but it's, it's getting trickier and more lenders and underwriters are not accepting it. They are saying we need a yes or no answer.
Okay, so here's some updates. Um, so we have recently, EJF has recently reached out to several engineering firms um, who have, uh, are, are offering the opportunity to come out and do a survey specific to the Fannie Mae uh, questionnaire addendum. Um, and uh, effectively, they will provide an answer about habitability, structural stability, uh, and so on. Um, this uh, provides an opportunity for both EJF and the board or the association to put that liability or those liability concerns onto a, uh, you know, somebody that's qualified to answer it and that we can provide to the underwriters. Um, so that was an email that most board members, if not all board members, should have received, uh, I think, Monday and Tuesday this week. Um, we are going to move forward with this plan for our clients unless they wish to opt out, which is certainly fine. Um, if that is something that the board is not uh, interested in doing or wants to have alternatives, then what we're going to request and require our clients to do is to consult with your attorney and let them help you draft answers that the board and a slash association will provide to EJF to use on these questionnaires. Um, I've had you know some people ask about that. Um, you know, please by all means, we've been we've been making that recommendation and, and giving that guidance since our December call that you should involve your attorney with this. Um, it may be just as expensive to ask them to draft what the responses as to have a survey done uh, until, um, until the dust settles on this. And I'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to recommend the survey be done annually. But again, our clients have the option to opt out if they want and take a, a different uh, tact on how they want these, uh, these questions to be answered. Um, we are putting additional documents or, uh, and, and working with our boards to make sure we have all these documents on HomeWise. Uh, all your meeting minutes, um, you know, uh, we need to make sure we've got those that we can share. Your monthly financials, obviously we have those. Annual financials, uh, audits, uh, annual budgets, and any type of engineering reports. Um, let me see. Um, okay. Um, so not a lot more to add beyond that. Um, CAI, Community Associations Institute, is uh, the industry organization um, for our business, for you all. Um, they did recently submit a letter to Fannie and Freddie asking that the guidelines be suspended for a year. No idea what's going to happen with that. Um, we've also heard that Fannie is potentially going to provide additional updated guidance uh, later this month. And so um, until this sort of gets worked out, uh, we're all trying to figure it out and make sure that we can keep sales happening and refinances happening. So um, that's, uh, that's basically it. Let me go ahead and go into uh, the Q and A's that I have here. Um, and try and answer some questions for you. All right, so Dan's asking, how current does the reserve study have to be? I would say no more than five years. Um, I will share that, um, <clears throat> that um, we did get some feedback. You know, if you had one done, for example, in 2020, or 2019, 2022, do you still need to do one um, or will that qualify for uh, answering these questions? Um, I, I can't be an expert in this because it's all still happening, but the feedback we're getting right now is no. The fact that you've had a reserve study done recently will not necessarily satisfy underwriters on these more engineer type of questions. Uh, struck a uh, reserve study is not going to talk about habitability. 
It's not going to talk about um, structural soundness. It's really looking at your primary components and estimating their replacement costs in today's dollars and their um, remaining useful life. So while that information is important as part of the underwriting process, you still have that specific language that a reserve study will answer. So that was a, that's a similar answer to another question, which is if you're getting ready to do a reserve study now, will you still need an additional inspection? Again, what we're hearing is yes, because the reserve study will not be the sole satisfying uh, condition for, uh, for those particular questions. Um, question is average increase. Uh, what is the average increase that we see in associations condo dues each year? Um, if the building's being run well, and that's both by the board and management, honestly, and there hasn't been extenuating circumstances, um, typically I would say two to three and a half percent. Now, we had 7% inflation last year, so will that settle down some? Um, I think so. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't, then, you know, obviously that, that range is subject to change. Prior to the pandemic, um, and again, based on uh, my 25 plus years of doing this, I, you know, I generally think that two to three and a half percent is a reasonable expectation for condo fee increases. Sometimes you can get away with lower, a little bit lower. If you're over 5%, then you should have some sort of extenuating circumstances, whether it's a big jump in inflation or uh, you have a new company do your reserve study and they come up with a different number, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, John asks, why can't we get quotes from other engineering firms? Why do we need to involve attorneys to take time to get other quotes? Uh, you're welcome to talk to engineer, other engineering firms. If, if, uh, you, if you have a, a preferred firm that you want to reach out, by all means, uh, please feel free to do so. Again, from EJF standpoint, um, we're simply taking the position that you can opt out uh, from using one of the several engineers that we've spoken to um, and find a different way to answer the questions. But if that's, if that's a, the route that the, the association chooses, then we're simply gonna ask for you to provide uh, the language that you want us to use when we get these questionnaires from the lenders. Um, and do you need to involve attorneys to take time to get other quotes? I don't think so. Um, I think either you choose to get a quote from an engineering firm to do this, or you talk to your attorney and see if between the board and the attorney, you can come up with answers to provide us to put uh, into these uh, questionnaires when we receive them. Uh, let's see. So the question of a $1,000 uh, fee uh, for uh, was raised as far as the size difference in buildings. So as I said, we manage uh, buildings of all sizes. Um, at $1,000, that's probably about three hours to four hours worth of time for an engineer. Um, and so um, we do actually expect that the fee for um, uh, for big buildings, really big buildings may be higher, um, but uh, for the smaller buildings, uh, it's mostly the time to just come out and actually visit the building and walk the building and then put together uh, a report and uh, responses. Um, will a notice be sent to all boards regarding this? I'm not sure. Uh, Marissa, I'm not sure what you're asking, but you can send me a message in Teams and I'll try and answer. We did send out uh, all of, uh, a notice about the option for the inspections to all boards on uh, Monday and Tuesday this week. All right. Do the selected engineering firms have adequate errors and emissions insurance to indemnify the property, the, the, the association? Um, yes. Um, Uh, is property diagnostics one of the engineers you negotiated uh, a deal with? Uh, yes, 
And yes, uh, you can hire them directly. I don't know what their direct fee would be uh, to do that, but certainly feel free to reach out to them. What should be done annually? Small condos can't afford annual, annual engineering fees of $1,000 mentioned. Uh, and two, on what authority does EGF require boards to engage an attorney to help answer the question? So in answer to your first question, you know, I don't have an easy answer on that. Um, at this point, as we're still understanding where Fannie Mae is on this and where the underwriters are, um, I think that the bottom line is, is that we can't, uh, we can't answer these questions about habitability, structural stability, and so on. So if the board wants to, uh, wants to make those answers and take that risk, um, they are welcome to do that. Um, you know, I, there's, there's no issue with that. However, um, you know, I would, I would suggest that you just figure if you can build this, this fee or whatever fee it's going to be into your budget in future uh, budget cycles. So when you do your 2023 budget uh, in September of this, you know, or October, do you want to build it in or don't you? Um, you know, and we do have the option to say, here's this, here's a study that was done in 2022 and presented to the lenders at that point. We don't know what the lenders are going to say. If they're going to say, okay, that's fine. Or if they're going to say, yes, well, we need an updated one. I can't, I can't predict how they're going to respond to that. On what authority does EJF require boards to engage an attorney? We don't require you to do that. Um, we are simply going to require that if you do not want to do a survey, you don't want to engage an attorney, and you want to give us answers directly, then it's just documented that these answers have come from the association. That's all. Um, and that's what we'll provide. Uh, you suggested that these engineering inspections should be completed annually. Is that frequency somehow tied to satisfying the yes, no lender question? I think I just sort of answered that again. I, I, don't, I can't predict the future and where the lenders are going to be uh, in, in nine to 12 months on these. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see on that. Um, if EJF is proceeding on an opt-out basis, will we have a choice of engineers if we don't opt out? Yes, most definitely. Happy to accommodate that. Does the board need to pass a formal resolution accepting your offer for the engineer to make the visit and complete the report? Um, that's partially going to be dependent upon your individual governing documents and what kind of uh, authorization requirements you have for approving something. Um, obviously, you know we want the board to uh, to just to discuss all this. Um, you know, uh, I, I've got several uh, websites as, as noted in, in the um, the slide deck, which you can visit on, on your at your convenience. Um, but if the board, if a board wants to move forward, then there should be a formal vote saying that uh, they approve that. Uh, and just remember, <clears throat> if it's in person, uh, as we start to open up, it can be by majority vote. And if it's electronic, it needs to be unanimous um, as far as the approval. Uh, yes, we will be sharing, uh, Richard will be sharing the recording along with the PowerPoint. We will send that out to folks. Um, how long is the engineer's report good for? I think that ties back into, you know, what the underwriters are going to be looking for. Uh, let's see. Now, I think somebody said our email says you need to decide by tomorrow. I I think the requirement was the 14th, not the 4th. Uh, we did not intend to give you just a day following this. Um, and if folks need additional time, that's fine. Uh, I did have one question come up. Um, why are we doing, uh, giving you only two weeks? Part of the reason is, is that we have questionnaires coming in daily. And so we need to be able to know how uh, you all, as our clients, want us to handle those, uh, those questions. Um, let's see here. 
So good question. What is uh, what about properties that are made up of more than one building? Uh, will they be charged uh, $1,000 per building? The answer to that is no, Martina. Um, again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, how they'll handle the larger buildings, I think that's going to be more of a direct conversation. Um, one of the things that I did check on in its relation to your building, uh, your community, Martina, is I raised the question on a, on a national uh, uh, presentation with Fannie and Freddie about what if you've got a community of multiple buildings and the building where the underwriter has sent you the questionnaire for does not need a new roof, but a building elsewhere in the community does. Um, and that question was specifically addressed and Fannie's response was, they don't care that it's not the specific building. If there is a building in the community that needs that work done, then that's how they're gonna view the answer. So again, it's Fannie maybe not thinking this through as well as they could have. I mean, that might be my argument, uh, but that's the guidance that we're, we're hearing right now. Uh, so uh, yes, as I said, we did do a presentation back in December um, and uh, we did send out a notice earlier this week. Again, um, we wanna give folks, I think it's to the 14th to, to mull this over and figure out what they wanna do. Um, I thought this was a three-year form, why handling? So I'm not aware of any three-year uh, time frame. That's not for typically for uh, reserve studies or uh, for this. Um, but again, we don't know what uh, Fannie Mae and the underwriters are gonna say as far as how long something like this will be good for. Um, yeah, so somebody says they had another firm do a reserve study and they would not include this in their previous study. And that was six months ago. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, clarification. Yes, we're being told right now that the engineers will consider this document good for three years. Um, uh, yes, we can make available the list of engineers. Okay. It says three, four, John, and I apologize. Um, this was meant to be uh, 314. Um, annual inspection doesn't make sense for a lot of small buildings because we can go years without a, a unit up for sale. Um, you, so don't forget, it's not just sales, um, it's also refinances. But yes, if you don't have any and you want to just provide uh, whatever answers to us for now, that's fine. Um, you can wait until that, till something comes up if you've got a, a small building. Um, Sanchi, I'll talk to you offline about co-ops um, and your question. Um, and so again, I stand corrected on the one year. Um, we are being told it's three years uh, that these should that the engineer will say these are good for, because if they note something, they will note sort of the severity of it um, and a timeline for addressing it. Um, okay, so John, um, I think a similar email went out uh, for our December notification. I apologize if. Uh, if you folks didn't receive it, um, again, I'm uh, happy to, uh, folks will have additional time to make decisions on whether or not they wanna go forward with the survey, whether they wanna speak with council, whether they just wanna provide us with answers. Um, and so again, uh, from our standpoint, it's, it's fully up to boards on how they want to um, address this. Um, is Fannie Mae concerned about current mortgage loans? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I think, you know, I don't want to minimize what happened in Florida because a lot of people lost their lives and it was a really tragic event. But um, 
Uh, I do think to some extent this, this could be an example where the government is trying to be responsive and maybe this pendulum is swinging too far to one side. Um, how I, I don't think they'll do anything with current mortgage loans. Refinancings, as I've mentioned, will be uh, impacted um, because um, just because uh, this is what they've got in place right now. So um, if you've got a mortgage already, I don't think that that's a consequence. All right. Correct. Uh, if they're every three years, then no, there's not an annual charge. Um, and that's just, uh, again, that's if it's not needed, it's not done. Uh, trying to see what else there is. If you are presently working with an engineering firm on a project, is it wise to use another engineering firm to conduct the study or use this one you are working with? Uh, good question, Cheryl. Uh, I would say by all means, uh, reach reach out to them or ask us to reach out, ask your manager to reach out to them. Uh, in your case, Nancy can reach out to them if you want and just see if they'll be willing to do this um, while they're working on a project on site. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, um, I think that's it for all of the questions. Um, Happy to take any more. Um, again, trying to be sensitive to everybody's uh, lunch hour and work day. Um, greatly appreciate everybody being on the call. Uh, as I said, we will make this uh, recording available as well as the slide deck, um, as well as a few uh, uh, links as well. And um, please feel free to reach out uh, with any questions. Um, I will be the point person uh, for this issue. Um, and you can reach me at scott.burka, B-U-R-K-A, at ejfrealestate.com, or just email your manager um, and we can uh, work to get his questions addressed as well. So um, thank you everyone for joining, really appreciate it. I'll do one final check here, see if there's any last minute questions that I missed. Um, uh, Lisa, I see you just added one question. Um, if one company did the reserve study of property diagnosis, did it, should the company, same company do this report? I think there's probably an advantage to it. I don't, I would say it's better to reach out and have them do it than to use a, a different company. You're certainly welcome to do whatever you want, but Presumably they're gonna already have familiarity with your building. And so that should make it easier for them as well. Um, how often should an inspection of the building occur regardless of the new requirements? So that's a really good question because we're also hearing that, let me see if I can find this real quick, that, um, we we're hearing that part of what Fannie Mae is going to be looking for is um, inspections to be done. I think I'm, I'm working from memory. I'm going to try and find it for you. But uh, once the building hits 20 years of age, they want them done every five or 10 years is my recollection. Um, let's see if I can find this real quick. Uh, no, this particular one doesn't address it. I will get that, that link for everyone um, and make it available. Um, but there is some talk about requiring them, uh, either it's five or 10 years after the building hits 20 years. So um, that's something else to be thinking about. Uh, we so said we just had the reserve study done approximately six months ago. Some members feel that we could fill in the form them yourselves. Again, uh, that is the, the board's call. Um, if that's the route, just you know, let us know and we'll want to just have documentation um, that the board has, has chosen that route and provided those responses that they want us to use um, for any questionnaires that come in for that community. Okay. Again, thank you all very, very much for your time. Um, 
Uh, we will work to keep you all informed and also uh, not only about this, but other issues impacting the industry. Uh, we will be announcing very shortly a monthly webinar on varying topics. So watch for that. Um, we're looking at doing them uh, on the third Thursday of the month uh, around noon. Um, and again, thank you all very much. Have a good rest of the day.